what a wonderful thing is our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Well, we have a wonderful, wonderful guest tonight. And he is going to talk about Our Lady in a very special way. One of my favorite devotions, Our Lady at Chisahova. A very inspirational Madonna because Our Lady had much to do and suffered much and yet is still there with her wounds. And you know that down deep in our mother's heart, there is special love for all those in Poland and all those who love her as Our Lady Chisova. You know, I didn't learn how to say your last name. I'm going to try it, though. So we have with us this evening Father Simon Stef- Stefanovich. Pretty good, huh? Very good. Okay. Very good. <laughs> From the order of St. Paul. Uh, St. Paul was the first hermit, and uh, he's known as, it's known as the Pauline order, not Paulus now, but Pauline. His community is entrusted with the National Shrine of Our Lady of Chesterhova. It's the home, and you may have heard it in this way, of the Black Madonna. And I don't want to take up too much time because he has a lot to say about Our Lady of Chesterhova. So please welcome Father Simon. I would like you to to explain the the uh, Our Lady of Chesterhova, known also as uh, the Black Madonna. But why is she called the Black Madonna? Well, the Our Lady of Chesterhova, the picture, holy icon, it was painted as an icon according to the features of the women living that area. Ah. So dark brown or mulatto, and obviously long history, constant lamps, candles yeah, burning. Yeah. We have a great fire as the, the shrine, there are chapel of Our Lady of Chistova and Basilica in a history to have a greater view for the greater number of pilgrims coming, they display in Basilica. Uh-huh. And our church tower is the highest in Poland, 315 feet. And the church steeple was five times under the fire. Mm. One great fire was 1690. But dam- it didn't damage the holy icon that became black. Actually, the black, according to the study before the war, in uh, August 37, in Nazi Workers' Magazine, mm. they described that we white people in Central Europe, in Poland, in Czestochowa, are honoring the Schwarze Madonna, the Black Madonna. Hmm. And this is a miraculous intervention of Mary that the shrine in Poland survived Second World War. We are having signatures <coughs> even not only Will, uh, William Frick, the Minister of Interior, not only Hans Frank, who was Hitler Governor General, but also Heinrich Himmler visited the shrine. Because they were lords. Nobody knew what they had in their minds. Yeah. The masses were said, we lost some priests in Dachau for preaching about Our Lady Queen of Poland. Mm. Or all this, that the Poland would be free. They took them directly from the sacristy. And then, even Hitler could visit incognito. It's not very clear signature. According to the father giving the tour, Hitler is supposed to visit August uh, 1941, on his way southeast of Poland to meet Mussolini, mm. this historical event. And the Russian liberated uh, the Marshal Konyev. God chose in his providence, who liberated uh, Krakow and also Czestochowa. Now we are preaching that God, Mary, are greater than Hitler, than Stalin. Mm-hmm. And now uh, we are having increased number of pilgrims and walking pilgrimages. And we are having a beautiful organ in the chap, renovated 32 voices, and major basilica 105. And we are having three organists 
and one lady who is very talented, and she's a composer. She composed over uh, 60 compositions in Anna of Mary. Her mm -hmm. name is Alice Golashevska. And she took those words, when they describe it in negative meaning, the mm -hmm. Schwarze Madonna, the Black Madonna. And she composed this beautiful song, which I was very happy during this morning mass. That Where we sang that. That they <laughs> sang <laughs> in, in, uh, even with the words in Polish <laughs> and in English, Madonna di Schwarze Madonna. Mad and when we have groups from many countries, so Holy Masses are said not only in Polish, but to give opportunity to any language in the world, as the last year we, ha we had the uh, pilgrimages from 94 countries, as to mm. it was the International Eucharistic Congress in Wrocław, and the Holy Father visit to Poland. So Bishop Edward uh, from uh, uh, Wrocław, who was uh, president of the International Eucharistic Congress, he said, Father, we are having group from 94 countries, all of them requested to visit Czestochowa yeah. and Wadowice, the birthplace of our beloved Holy Father, South of Krakow. Explain to us how I already got those uh, gashes on her cheek. The gashes, the slashes or scars, whatever they call, good people from the, be the beginning of the shrine in 1382, uh -huh. when the picture in God's providence was brought from Ukraine by the Prince Ladislav of Opole, uh, saving the holy icon against Tatars, uh -huh. the problem was. And the part of the Ukraine belonged to Poland. Actually, he was touring to the west of Poland, to Opole. On his way, he spends, according to our chronic, three days and nights, newly opened monastery, Pauline fathers and brothers. And he has a vision, and he left the holy icon. So, originally, it was monastery chapel. Nobody expected that it would be so meaningful and great, not only for Europe, for Poland, but for Central mm -hmm. Eastern Europe. We had always pilgrims from around the neighboring countries. After International mm -hmm. Youth Congress, when the, our beloved Holy Father chose Czestochowa, 1991, two years before Denver, so it became international. And good people donated uh, silver frames, votive offerings, which we are having around the walls in the chapel, vestments are made, seven, attracted the robbers, invaders, who overran the shrine, they murdered some of the monks. It was mm. about 50 years after the picture was brought to Czestochowa to Poland. Mm. They took the picture out of the altar, began to run away about one and a half miles. Now it's a beautiful church of St. Barbara, and there is a well where is the water which served to wash whatever, and stripping silver frame jewelry donated by good people as a votive offering, they slash with the sword. And the picture was completely broken in three pieces. Mm. And then was taken to Krakow, and the great king, uh, Ladislaus Jagiello, whose wife, St. Hedwig, was canonized by the Pope mm -hmm. last year, ordered to repair. So now they are very meaningful, very symbolic for the history of Poland and for the church in our country, mm -hmm. for all the Polish people living abroad all over the world, mm -hmm. as there is very strong devotion. They, they couldn't repair that, could they? Well, they, they were trying to, to repair, but they also left like a symbol of suffering together with Mary. When we suffer, mm -hmm. As Poland went through many sufferings mm -hmm. and partitions, mm -hmm. and also the shrine survived altogether, according to the studies, 15 mm -hmm. wars and sieges successfully with the help of Mary. So when we suffer, the church in Poland, the Polish people, they put on a map of Poland, very symbolic, on a Polish flag. Mm -hmm. And during the Solidarity time, we have a beautiful picture when they are on a dress of Solidarność. So when we suffer together with Mary, yeah. She's helping us as the salvific meaning, like the suffering with Jesus Christ, the only, the only answer. Our and Holy Father's been there several times, has he not? Holy Father, as a pope, visited five times the shrine, wow. and we are praying constantly for a successful trip, yeah. pilgrimage next year in June. He's going back to Poland? He's going back to Poland. Wonderful. He's scheduled nine days, especially those dioceses, regions which they didn't have the opportunity, the chance to have the Holy Father. Yeah. Well, now, the, the people, do they, do they realize in Poland uh, the great gift that is to them, that they suffer with her and she suffers with them? Is that the reason for their great devotion to Our Lady Czesław? Well, the, 
the devotion to Our Lady of Chestova became part of our identity. Yeah. When I am now mm -hmm. preaching in a, during my retreat and mission across uh, around the United States, living the 40-hour devotion, I'm telling them if they find the church abroad without a copy, a replica of Our Lady of Chestova, it's not true Polish church because this <laughs> okay. is our spiritual yeah. Polish power. Right, yeah. Because it became very close and we are having also some other uh, nations who come like Filipino, like Haiti, they, they love Poland because they also have great devotion to Mary and they like Poland as the Pope's country, they oh. say. So from the beginning, Poland was very great in devotion to Our Lady. Our mm -hmm. first martyr, which we celebrated a thousand years of his uh, martyrdom last year, Saint Adalbert, he composed this famous song, Bogu Rodzica, Teotokos, God's Mother, which we sing, was sung by uh, knights, soldiers, mm -hmm. throughout the history. Mm -hmm. especially when we defeated Teutonic Knights, 1410. And we still sing now at 9 o'clock in the evening, it's uh, evening prayers and blessing the pilgrims, uh -huh. initiated by a great providential man, Karna Stefan Wyszyński. And we call this in Polish apple, or evening prayers and blessing, uh -huh. uh, with the uh, rosary and short homily and blessing by the bishop or by superior general or by Father Prior. Have there been healings attributed to, to the picture of Our Lady Chesova? Dear Mother Angelica, we are having around the walls crutches and braces of the sick people. Mm. And we are collecting any reports which are giving doctors mm -hmm. evidence, hospital, family statement, and Father is carefully collecting. But he says usually take three, five years to be evident that oh, it yeah. was only through Mary a supernatural, miraculous intervention. And among then, as I mentioned in the morning, homily, Holy Father left his papal sash stained with blood after oh, the assassination, after the assassination attempt against his life with yeah. the demonic powers chose yeah. May 13, which is very symbolic apparition mm -hmm. of Our Lady of Fatima. Right. Was, and he left his sash? And he left his papal sash and Holy Father said that his life was miraculously saved thanks to Our Lady of Czestochowa and of Fatima. And All the right. bullets intracted from the body of the Holy Father, he left in the crown of the statue of Mary and Fatima. I didn't know that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, awesome. and we keep very close to the Holy Icon because the wish of the Holy Father was not to display in a treasury or museum as we are having this collection of votive offerings or gift of thanksgiving. So we keep very close to the holy icon. This is the evidence that mm -hmm. Mary is still doing miraculous happening and uh, healings. And, and we are having crutches, many. And we have amber and corals. And one, one of those vestments have the wedding rings after happy marriages. There's book in sacristy we call book of the votive offerings when they yeah. write down over between 1,000 up to 1,000 a year among them. Oh, really? These yeah. are what they are here? Oh, this is what this wedding rings after happy marriages. Oh, and they put it where? On the, on the, the stove? Yeah, on a vestment, a vestment. we call our robes yeah. made by the sisters. Oh, really? We are blessed with the very talented sisters in Poland and still a great number of vocation. One, con uh, yeah. one, congregate, one uh, province could have 40, 50 novices. We gotta bring him back here from Poland. Like sis <laughs> we need him. Like Sister of Nazareth. Yeah. And thanks to the long line of Polish saints and blesseds, and we believe, we think that the, our beloved John Paul II from Poland is a coronation of the history of Poland, oh, yeah. of the church in Poland. Well, our lady keeps calling him her, her Pope. And I think he, I think he is. Our Lady Pope. Yeah, and Holy Father in the first pilgrimage, 1979, because near the Holy Icon on the right we have golden rose originally presented to Poland by the Pope Paul VI for millennium, 1,000th anniversary of Christianity. Mm. But the communists at that time didn't permission and refused the visa for the Pope. Yeah. So our Holy Father brought 79, and his prayers in front of the Holy Icon, when Holy Father dedicated Poland, the church in Poland, and 
the church all over the world. We have these words written, and he used the words as Chestochova is the town, more known in English and foreign languages, but uh, Shrine has uh, its proper name, Yasna Gura, which they translate sometimes Bright Mountain, like there are some churches, Los Angeles. Is, is this a, a basilica? Here? This is the chapel. A chapel. This is the chapel Holy Father is praying, and Holy Father used Yasnogurska Matko Koshchoa, means the mother of the church at Yasna Gura at Chestochova, because mm -hmm. usually we use in foreign languages Chestochova, mm -hmm. more known and easier. So in this case, we are in the heart of, of the church. And the church in Poland has been always faithful, the true part of the universal Christ church. This is what the Holy Father is praying last uh, uh, pilgrimage in May, in, in June, after the Eucharistic is, Congress. And the, 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 the picture is way at the top there, isn't it? This is the picture above the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. We, uh, our favorite topics for homilies, for spirituality for pilgrims, that mm -hmm. Mary conceived born Jesus and now is giving us above the tabernacle Holy Communion, Holy Mass. Oh, yeah. So it's very proper. And dear mother, you see the, the, the picture is with this vestment dress. They never yeah. show since the beginning. Mm -hmm. They've always been kind of decoration and triptychs and vestment added probably 16th, 17th century. After the Second World War, a providential man for Poland, for whose uh, great Karna Stefan Wyszynski, who was three years in prison by the yeah. communists, we pray for his beatification, he died in 1981. Mm -hmm. So his idea is that identical copy or replica is touring every parish. It took mm. 24 hours in every parish. It's the greatest retreat mission Mary is doing, uh -huh. returning to Maybe. faith, mm -hmm. to the church, repairing the marriages, mm -hmm. uh, individual mm -hmm. confession sometime after a long time, because we are doing this mission preparing mm -hmm. before. And according as far as I know, the idea is of Karna Wyszynski that our life, good life, Christian deeds, our love and devotion to Mary is supposed to be the best decoration. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the peep treat and expect in a parish that Mary is coming, not the picture. Mary is coming, like revisit us as this long mm -hmm. history of mm -hmm. pilgrimages and the kings and field generals and statesmen, ambassadors used to come and visit. So now Mary is revisiting us. It's impossible that the miraculous picture, the original good visit, so this is identical copy. Tell, tell us how... How do you feel devotion to Our Lady Ch Chestahova affects the people in this day and age? Is it hard to inspire them with devotion to Our Lady Chestahova? Yeah, dear mother, it's very important, your question, because after freedom, democracy, thanks to the strong and great movement, solidarity movement, mm -hmm. we are having many changes. We are having bad publication, yeah. the changing moral standards. We are having occult activities, sometimes with the be very bad results. So on the other hand, we have very strong charismatic movements, mm -hmm. neocatechumenism, renovating in the Holy Spirit. We are having light and life by Father Blachnitsky in Odore Sanctitatis the priest who is deceased initiated. We have three steps, spiritual oasis. We mm -hmm. use this word like an oasis in a desert, spiritual. Mm -hmm. When the young people are involved to be antithesis against mm -hmm. this bet. Mm -hmm. And also changes, economic changes. Uh, many people suffering, especially uh, those who are sick, unemployed, or have many children and family. So we, again, very strongly mm -hmm. turn back to Mary, as she saved us in many mm -hmm. times in her history. So we believe that the only last hope and our strength and our spiritual power comes from miraculous picture of Our Lady of Chestahova. So we have great increased pilgrimages, walking pilgrimages, walking. Annually, probably over 300,000 throughout the mm -hmm. summer because they come also in, in June, July. How far do they walk? They walk Six days from Krakow, nine days from Warsaw. 
Oh. The longest distance is uh, 21 days from the north of Poland. And they walk? They walk, they spend night. It's a very strong regimen. They yeah. get up 5 o'clock in the morning. They have mass in the morning, 6 o'clock. And they walk. It's like a walking retreat or retreat on the way. And they, they, they could confess to the priest walking. There are many structures, many conferences, and they have very beautiful, rich uh, songs. The traditional, mm -hmm. this is what uh, Sister beautifully yeah. saying in this, this morning, Sardecna Matko, but also the young people they have. And w they like also the message with guitar. Mm -hmm. And so briefly, this year, for the Assumption Fees, was over 100,000 walking pilgrims because they arrived four days, three days, two days. Mm -hmm. And the cardinals, bishops, archbishops coming, they sang the mass with walking priests, Santan, and many <laughs> sisters, I bet. and seminarians. The, the priests, over 1,300 priests took, because we keep uh, very strict statistics, over 1,400 seminarians, and a great number of sister nurses. So they walk and come to Mary, and this is a very strong religious movement. And then once a month, they come to the parish, to the center, to renew the vows, the promises, the tradition, the sink, and so. This is so, so, and this has became part of uh, our devotion in every parish. <laughs> and also, this is very strong devotion in the time of Advent. We still have in every parish, six o'clock in the morning, the Mass in, in, in honor of Mary, Rorate Celi, the super. We call Roratnia Msha <laughs> in Polish. So, I, I remember as an older boy and still they are coming and they are very enthusiastic, keep the records that not to miss. And every day we have large candy in honor of Mary mm. with the flowers and uh, this kind of decoration. No flowers on the altar, except the, the, the altar of the Mary is always decorated. And in every parish, it's a Aurora, the Holy Mass in honor of Mary in white mm -hmm. with glory in, in they call Rorat. Yeah, in Polish, Roratecelli, taking the words from mm -hmm. Roratecelli. So it is very strong devotion. Well, what about some of the, the people who have uh, died uh, for Our Lady, like Father Jersey? Uh, what is there, are there, were there rather martyrs who were martyred because of Our Ladies and their devotion? I had a great privilege to come celebrate the Mass with Father Jersey Popiluszko. It was 1983 in September, because beside the pilgrimages, like for the Assumption, for the Assumption, the peak of the pilgrimages, then Feast Our Lady of Chesova, August 26, the Nativity of Mary used to be the greatest, but now mm -hmm. uh, this uh, more in, in August. We are having pilgrimages by profession. Mm -hmm. Teachers, doctors, lawyers, farmers are coming for Sunday of, the, of September. And he initiated the third Sunday of September, the Mass for the Workers for Solidarity. This is what I was appointed to be a homilist. Mm -hmm. A month earlier by Father Ephraim Oshadwi, who was director of the homilies and sub-prior, and he was spent three years in prison. So when, fa when I met first time in sacristy, mm -hmm. and we talked about solidarity, the present situation, he said, Father, we should be very strong. Everybody, every priest, even he said every bishop, and he used very strong words. We're not supposed to be coward in spirituality. And then we celebrated, kind of celebrated the Mass. I was a homilist with my great privilege and God's blessing. He was leading a prayer of the faithful, very strong defending, suffering, uh, because he was chaplain of solidarity. And he was also chaplain of a Medicare. People working mm -hmm. in a hospital appointed mm -hmm. by the, the Karnowiczynski, the primate of Poland. And then when we're returning, because we, we can celebrate the Mass at the outdoor altar, beside the chapel and basilica, two churches, and all kinds of collection and a huge monastery for over 110 monks and priests, we are having outdoor altar when the people get in the fields and park, mm -hmm. over 100,000. Mm -hmm. So he initiated, he started this pilgrimage for workers for solidarity. And when we, I remember returning back to Sacred Heroes Father, next year they will be asking whether it was first pilgrimage or second. And also a very important thing is, 
in his spirituality. When he came to the shrine, he was looking for Father Ephraim, who spent three years in prison, asking for the meeting, and also he, he wanted his consolation because he was facing prison. Probably he didn't expect that he would be murdered so soon because three priests were very strong in solidarity movement, Father Jerzy Popilushko, Monsignor uh, Henry Jan Jankowski, and Father Jancas, three priests in a family, one in Florida, one in, in uh, Sweden, and the one in Poland who died in heart attack a few years ago. And there are all kinds of stories that probably the communists planned to kill somebody else. But then as Father Popilushko became very strong, he initiated holy masses for fatherland, for Poland in Warsaw, in mm -hmm. St. Stanislaus Korska Church. People were coming from all parts of, not only Warsaw, of Poland. And there were many secret service police watching, taping, and they follow him. There are all kinds of difficulties. As far as I remember, I know they tried to throw the, the stones against his car, all kinds of putting his materials in his room, you know, and then it's very emotional in our books when the priests say the Mass, they sign the, the clergy book, bishops and priests, like before there was in Maximia Co Maria Kolbe, 1924-1927. Mm -hmm. So in 12th anniversary of his priesthood, he signed, and I remember very clear his words, he was asking Holy Spirit and Mary for an extra spiritual strength. Mm. And this was very symbolic. So he became martyr, and why did they say he was a martyr? Because he, he died for, for, for Jesus, uh, yeah. for Mary. And dear mother, when Holy Father visited, he, he died because he came first time 1983, mm -hmm. and the following year, 1984, with these two more solidarity leaders, mm -hmm. uh, chaplains. And in September, and in following October, they kidnapped him, torture, and murder. When Holy Father visited Poland, 1987, so he quote his homily. For us, it was the sign that Holy Father knew his life and knew his activity, that he was a really good priest, holy priest, and murder as you see the Holy Father visited the mm -hmm. stone and he's in, in great uh, prayers and honor. Because the communists didn't want to be buried, Father Popilushko, in Warsaw, in the parish where he was uh, working mm -hmm. near the church. Because they wanted to move him in uh, northeast, where mm -hmm. he was born, far away. But I witnessed myself the longest lines I saw to pay respect to his grave in Warsaw. People were returning to faith, returning to the church. Not only Catholics, many others. Mm -hmm. It is all kind of people. This was... For us, it's a sign we pray. We pray every day mm -hmm. for his beatification, like we pray for Oh, I think it must have been uh, just an awesome. It looked like our Holy Father's kissing the casket. With the the casket, stone. like Holy yeah. Father also kissed in a previous pilgrimage the, 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 the tomb of Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski yeah. under the cathedral. Mm. So for us, it is a sign that Holy Father knew the life of those person like Karna Wyszynski, Father Jerzy. But there's been a lot of martyrs in Poland, have there not been? Well, Poland went through many trials, sufferings. The shrine survived 15 wars and sieges. There's also a book in English by James Michener, Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, he described all those from the north, from the south, from the east, mm -hmm. from the west, following probably our great... Uh, novelist Henry Sienkiewicz, who got Nobel Prize for literature for his work for Vadis, 1905, mm -hmm. this, and about persecution of Christianity. And he wrote also a trilogy. Among them is Deluge, which 1655, where I avoid usually from what country, but let's say generally from the north, was different country. Now we are friends, we are cooperating. In the, yeah. So <laughs> we work for peace and ecology. But they overrun Poland. They damage many churches, castle, and they're attacking the shrine for 38 days. And 70 monks, under the leadership of our heroic prior, Father Augustin Kordecki, or they pronounce Kordeki in English, stood up 
and defend it, and he prostrate in front of the holy icon. Uh. Even the original was hidden twice against this army from the north, 1655, Fawain Monastery. Mohuf Paulini near Goguvek in the second monastery founded after Chestohova. And second time during the Second World War. It was hidden at the double wall in the double deck of the uh, library table. Then as soon as Nazis visited and signed the, the guest books, they removed the double wall. This way the holy icon original was safe. You had to do all kinds of things when you were during wars in order yeah, to during protect the, wars. the icon. Yeah, this is uh, our last hope, Mary, this beautiful picture. And we are caring and having almost in every home. Do you, did you find during the occupation or communist uh, leadership, did you find the people more having more devotion or do they have more devotion now? Well, probably throughout the history and through the suffering, we can notice that we uh, had uh, more people coming to the church. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm giving a tour from many countries, mostly sp English speaking. Yeah. If I say that now due to these changes, bad publication, um, all kinds of changes, uh, the, even the less people coming to the church, they are surprised as far the, f now they have freedom, democracy. But we having changes years, yeah. probably takes time. So we can notice that during the suffer always, during the Nazi occupation, I study carefully. I um, elaborated 12 pages and the people were coming and crying. So Hans Frank, who was enemy of Poland, he mm -hmm. visited several times the shrine and we quote him in our homilies. When all lights were wiped out for Poland and he says literally the church and the saint of Czestochowa became last point uh, for Poland, like, last like beacon. Mm -hmm we have in translating in Polish. So he find out what is the most meaningful, the devotion, because he saw these people coming, crying, visiting, and this is what this great devotion still is now. Well, I'm hoping that you will have a greater devotion to Our Lady Czestochowa. In fact, today, like Don Bosco had his vision, the Eucharist, and Our Lady is our hope. Without the Eucharist and Our Lady, there is no way, no chance of anyone uh, giving us peace. No one, no group, no government, no one can give this world peace except the Eucharist and Our Lady. And I, I think we have to understand that because without Our Lady and the Eucharist, there can be no peace. There can be no hope. And now our country is at war again. You wonder, you know, will we ever learn? Will we ever understand that the way to peace is not war? The way to peace is God. And so we're going to give you a chance to ask your questions. And uh, we're going to be back with Father and Our Lady just over in just a minute. We're back with Father Simon, and we've been talking about the great icon of Our Lady of Chesterhova. And we've learned a lot about how she got the slashes. But most of all, we learned that we should have great devotion to Our Lady, because she is the one who will crush the Satan's head that's been promised for centuries. Maybe this is the time, maybe it's not. But you and I know from our past and from past history that Our Lady will always be there to crush the head of Satan and bring her children back to Jesus. 
So we have a phone call. Hello? Hello, Mother Angelica. Yeah, where are you from? Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wonderful. What's your question? Well, first of all, comment. I love you dearly. Thank you. And Thank Father you. Simon, good evening. Good and evening. I just wanted to share with you and with Father Simon that um, I'm of Polish-American, well, American-Polish uh, <laughs> heritage. And being out of Pittsburgh, we, we say when you have a mix, you're a Heinz 57 variety. <laughs> But I wanted to tell you about um, the the great devotion that I, the Polish side of our family here in America, and most Polish Americans have to Our Lady of Czestochowa. And I know my great my great grandparents came from Poland, and my grandfather passed away. Uh, but my grandmother just recently had to go into a nursing home, and it, we had the sad occasion of cleaning her house out and the belongings and came across uh, an album about uh, dedicated to Our Lady of Czestochowa. It was in all Polish, and about five books about Our Lady of Czestochowa. And uh, I was so just taken by the awesome picture. And, and just when you realize in reading the book that they couldn't cover the scars, and you see the suffering and the love and the tender maternal love that she has for all of us, and, and I, I really think it just speaks so much for uh, all the suffering uh, that we feel we're going through and the way that she's looking at us with that, that motherly love, and I think most Polish Americans and hopefully everyone in the world knows her as uh, the most perfect mother, tender and loving. And I just wanted to share that with you, that what a great devotion uh, so many Americans have to Our Lady of Czestochowa. You found that true, huh? Oh, dear mother, this is the example in my experience within these 16 years. We are having people who have a dream to be at least once in their life because their parents or grandparents were telling them how they walk to Czestochowa, how they surf on their knees the miraculous uh, picture, the altar, because mm -hmm. they are walking on their knees and touching. Mm. And this is the this, uh, classical example. How is this devotion is spread all over the world, wherever the Polish were traveling. They always take the copy of Lady of Czestochowa and sometimes a, bit, a little bit of soil from the lands because we're very nostalgic people. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing that, that you think if you left your country and you left all the beautiful examples of devotion, you would forget, but they don't forget. They don't forget. They, they come continue and they by generation, like yeah. this. Uh, Lady yeah. is a classical example, you know, how this devotion is continued by generation. This is the Holy Father. Yeah. Every time in his pilgrimage to Poland, he said that we're supposed to uh, preserve and transfer this heritage mm -hmm. to the uh, Blessed Mother and to the Holy Eucharist. As it's father. one thing we've forgotten in uh, our different, uh, different religions and different uh, uh, denominations, but in the Catholic Church, we've always had some kind of devotion to Our Lady, uh, according to whether you're Italian or, or Polish or whatever. But it seems like the Madonna of, of Czestochowa seems to go to every nation. It just isn't just for Poland. You, you see uh, pictures of her everywhere. Yeah, because throughout the history was not only became an uh, increase in meaning not only for Poland, but always for neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. We came from Czechoslovakia, Moravia, yeah. uh, Hungary, at that time, they called Kingdom of Moscow and uh, to the, or the West Germany. But more and more, it, it was in the 20th century, the end of 19th and 20th century. The, mm -hmm. the Poland was became uh, free after First World War. And then Nazi occupation, communist and providential, and the kind of Stefan Wyszynski and uh, Holy Father, John Paul, as a Cardinal, Karol Wojtyła. I had the privilege as seminarian together with other alumni to serve yeah. Holy Father and Bishop at the time, 52. Two cardinals and bishops, they used to come for annual retreat. Mm. And we served the individual masses and also served uh, as waiters at the refectory. We have refectory for 300. For the yeah. We have another call. Hello? Good, good evening, Father and Mother. I was to um, uh, Yasna Gura about two years ago in a, in a p p p pilgrimage, and um, 
They told us to watch the altar at the end of the Mass. They were going to cover the Sadhana Madonna. Why is that? Why do they cover the icon during Mass? I think that's what she's This asking. is the tradition. Six in the morning every day, all around the year. Mm -hmm. There's official unveiling holy icon at this place in a fireproof case, heat-resistant box, and mm -hmm. bulletproof glass we added for protection. Mm -hmm. So it's unveiled for the Mass every hour on the hour until noon, and Saturday, Sunday on feast until 1. Mm -hmm. Used to be long break. But now it's shortened one because more groups and after International Christian Congress Pope's visit to our country. Why is uncovered and closed down? Because it's a holy icon. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are not for visit. We, the, the, the beautiful also tradition, the Eastern Church, mm -hmm. we're supposed to talk with the person, right. our Blessed Mother, when it's mm -hmm. unveiled, when it's a break for cleaning or because we have a great movement of pilgrims. So they officially mm -hmm. unveil and close down. They can on the on the um, on the screen now. They're showing this uh, screen coming down. Oh. There it is. Yeah, this you is closing see. down. But that's only for mass, isn't it? No, after the masses. After the mass, they after the masses because they unveil six in the morning every hour. The hours are holy masses. One in Latin, with the Gregorian oh, yeah. chant. There it is. And they close at noon, at twelve. Ah. On Saturday, Sunday, feast day at one. And you can't see it the rest of the day? No, no, and there is break. Oh, I see. used to be for three and a half hours, but they shorten and shorten because there are more uh, groups, delegation, pilgrims coming. So they, uh, they decided for the second year to have only one hour break. Uh, then they, they raise the... And they raise again with trumpets. Our fathers and brothers are uh, having the professor who is confrater because mm -hmm. we have tradition confraternity. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Albert, professor... Alfred, and they are, tr they are playing uh, in tr uh, Royal Introit for unveiling. Oh, okay. For closing, it's a national Polish religious anthem, Gaudemater Polonia in Latin, or eight composition by Italian Father Lorenzo Perosi, 1909, when he came to the shrine, and he got the inspiration, and they are very emotional. I the remember. Italians are emotional? No, uh, the music. Uh -huh. Ita it <laughs> Italian also? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, they are very, very emotional, oh, dear mother, uh -huh. because they like Polish. They cry yeah. and they straight the hands and they send the, the <laughs> kiss, you know. The, yeah, but they know. Found, uh, found the Lorenzo Perosi and this composition, the music by our trumpeteers, uh -huh. fathers and brothers and seminarians. So they... When this closed down, it's very emotional, musing, and this like, I remember with a young priest was, you know, during the, we have many uh, pilgrimages from every parish. It was second, uh, the, the Vatican II session. We pray for the intention, and we have visits, and they will give them a copy of Lady of Chestova. They brought candles, they brought seeds, the children, which we use for the Holy Host, for the mm -hmm. Mass. It was very meaningful and very emotional, I remember for the whole of my life, this, this kind of great devotion. And you had trumpeteers? Yeah, we have trumpeteers. Oh, that would give you a devotion, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, huh? they beautifully awesome. play. Nice. They beautiful play make the impression. Ah, yeah. Many people, you know, like this because kind of, you know, like unveiling. They see first time the holy icon, yeah. if they are first in their life, or even if they come second and third and several times, so they always uh, very impressed. Oh, I think with, that's great. Well, you know, it reminds me of the... The Mass on the Feast of St. Rock. Uh, I don't know why the Italians in, in, uh, in my church got the great devotion to St. Rock. Mm -hmm. and, and they used to have fireworks during the consecration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. That, that whole building shook like that. But you knew for sure something very special was happening. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't do that anymore. I think we ought to bring it back. A few fireworks would do us a lot of good, wouldn't it, huh? <laughs> we have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother Angelica. Yeah, where are you from? Are you from Fort Worth. And what is your question? <laughs> that is the mo most riveting uh, uh, icon I've ever seen of our Blessed Lady. Yeah, that's it beautiful. Just ex it exudes holiness. I'm curious, how, Father, how do you protect it from uh, humidity and from a conservation standpoint, preserve it? How do you preserve the icon? 
Well, it is in the fireproof case, we added heat resistant box and bulletproof glass. But there is also fresh air between. Ah. And there is commission. Once a year, mostly on the Holy Week, before we were tradition mm -hmm. in Europe and Poland, be the sepulchre for Jesus mm -hmm. in front of the holy icon. So they study if, if it is need any repairs, moisture, uh, temperature changes and so. And also they clean and change or keep for another year the vestment. Ah. Because there are seven vestments. Plus we have also vestment like made of straw, made of prisoners, blankets, all kinds mm -hmm. of suffering. There's also with the trophies of military, of the soldiers, they offer the medals. Ah. And one beautiful dress is made by those trophies, victorious. Mm -hmm. So it's well protected and the professor, because we are carefully study and have contact uh, the special commission, superior general and Father Price supervising. So they, s they sometimes say that Mary is Pro, what we call protected herself very well. Ah, uh, yeah. No big damage, no uh. big so far needed any general repair. So sometimes yeah. very small, sometimes uh, soothe or kind of thing, you know, this cleaning. So it is commission who study anything needed, in, they, they do and repair. And they, they do that once a year? Huh? Once a year, mostly. But if they notice anything, could come any time of the year. I think that's awesome that you have that, that kind of love. Uh, f for the icon. You yeah. had a renovation not too long ago, didn't you? For the church? For, well, yeah. we are still doing what we call external renovation, historical walls and bastions mm -hmm. and the uh, royal apartments. That because you're doing here, to, oh, right? yeah. Or oh, even <laughs> myself. <laughs> but it's, it's now is uh, the scaffolding almost finished and everything for toward 2000. The year 2000? Year, year 2000. <laughs> And obviously, in the same time, we spiritually renovated, renewal. We have all kinds of retreat and training. And the mission of the shrine is hearing individual confession from six in the morning, all the day long, seven days a week. You have confession all day? All day. <sighs> and they are changing. So we have Father Pryor, three, Father Isidor Matuszewski, three, three sub-priors, and the shrine director who keep the list when you have two times, three times a day. And the record was in blessed memory, Father Krzysztof Kotnis, my novitiate master. Mm -hmm. He died uh, last year. He spent up to 16 hours out of 24 a day. Here in confession. Here in confession. And we have some other example because shrine is open 24 hours before the assumption. So who have, <laughs> who have enough power when he said mass, some meals, and he turn, return and come and hear confession. The same at the, our sister shrine at Doylestown, Pennsylvania. We are having confession even on Sundays in Polish and in English. And this is the mission of the shrine. Very That's spiritual. Awesome. Yeah, Holy Father is reminded us that the mission of the shrine is altar of the fatherland, is confession of, of Poland. And it's it's 24 uh, hours a day, don't you wish? Huh? Four days before the Assumption, two or three days before the 26th of August. And our Superior General is also have residence at the Shrine of Jasna Gura at Czestochowa, Father Stanisław Turek, because we had in a history in Hungary, not in Rome. In Rome we have representatives and those who study mm -hmm. at the Gregorian University, some other. And... Uh, then in the history was Hungary, Yugoslavia, glory of our order, but was damaged by uh, were Turkish invaders. Now we are friends again because <laughs> they are helping us to join NATO. Oh, and yeah. their Mrs. Ambassador was at the shrine. And I was teasing in the history that King John <coughs> Sobieski defended the whole Europe mm -hmm. at the invitation of Holy Father in 2011. Uh, when he in Vienna defeated uh, Kallenberg, part of Vienna. And now said... I, at the end of two, I said, Mrs. Ambassador, we need your help to join the NATO. And she says, I'm giving my blessing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, history you know, is I, history. I hate, but to, I hate to do this, but um, Father has, has given us some beautiful gifts. And, and I want to share them with you tonight because it, it's... Uh, such a Christmas gift for the sisters and myself. And so I want to share this with you 
This, this is on is behalf of my oh. superior general, Father oh. Stanisław Turek, oh. with his uh, yes, prayers painted, and prayer greetings. Mm. It's attached to the original holy icon and blessed by him. Oh. And with his invitation of the Amade Angelica to visit the shrine, oh. and to be guest of honor. Oh, that would be awesome. Any time This is of the awesome. Year. It's so beautiful. And uh, also with the book, <laughs> this is what we discussed, the shrine of the Black Madonna. Oh. But now it's positive meaning due to this song. Yeah. And when we have groups from many countries, the, among them from Germany with the priest bishop, and they sing positively, Madonna di Schwarze, Madonna, and the very favorite <laughs> Itali Italians, <laughs> yeah, Madonna yeah. Nera. Yeah. Yeah, very this is from our uh, Father Provincial, Father Lucio Tiracinski, good provincial at Doestown, mm. as we are. So this is for, for but you. But this, this is a very ornate uh, bishop's... Uh, uh, one of our bishop, yeah. uh, uh, Bishop Konstantin Moschinski in the uh, 18th century. Oh, that's beautiful. He was in north part of Poland, bishop. And his cross is still in a museum. Mm. You know, in, in, the, in the days past, and I, I hate to, you know, they had their problems too, but they seem to have such a love and devotion. But they everything they built was devotional. You, you could look at a... You could look at this crown here. This is an imitation of the crown of thorns. This is the, the from the electrified barbed wire from concentration camps. Oh, this is, this is the uh, true. And the rosary made of bread in Auschwitz and Ravensbrück we are treasuring. Among the golden monstrances, chalices, all kinds of gifts. And this is also very suffering. And we are also having the monstrance made by the priest in Dachau. Really? With the knives and decoration, not of gold, with the food cans. We still treasure. And you have that in here too? You no, know, we have in a, in a treasure and the museum. But see, anything <coughs> they had in those days was beautiful. They had great love, huh? Yeah, great love, great devotion. And this what is, is what that? Keep our country independent and now in freedom. And is that what they blew? This is what they used. <laughs> we have collection, beautiful wow. collection in a museum from the times when they welcomed also, well, the unveiling, closing, but yeah. also they use a band orchestra yeah. for unveiling. Yeah, look at that. This is the details of this uh, vestment. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is the, the vestment from the last year. Oh, really? Yeah. This was last year, one of the most expensive. But every piece is a gift of Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's a votive offering. Nothing was bought. Mm. Well, I, uh, I can't thank you enough. This is we, from we treasure our superiors. This. And I'll have to write a nice note of thanksgiving to your superiors for this great, great gift. Because, you know, it's wonderful to be able to look at something that was not only created from talent, but from great love. They put their very best to what they did for the Lord. And when uh, Michelangelo was in the corner of the Sistine Chapel, it took him so long, and one of the cardinals yelled at him, who's going to see it over there? And Michelangelo looked down and he said, God. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to me, that, that meant, uh, oh, meant so much to me because he was doing it for God. And he did it with great love. I want to thank you. Mm. And I don't know if the people can see this beautiful. What is this made out of? Made of wool. Wool? Wool, wool. Our Lady of Chesterhova in wool. Tapestry made oh. of wool. You can't. Uh, to me, that's devotion. And I think we have that talent in America, but somehow it died along the way. But it won't die for long, because we're going to bring it right back. And I want to wish you and you, Father, would you give us a blessing real quick in Polish? Pan z wami i z duchem twoim. Błogosławieństwo Boga Wszechmogącego, Ojca i Syna i Ducha Świętego niech stąpi na was, pozostanie na zawsze. Amen. Well, that means a lot, yes. And may the Lord bless you now and forever.